Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your choice and try. Good morning, Zion. Christ the Lord has risen today. You have just heard that music uh, in this program. And this morning we would uh, also like to thank a couple of people in making this broadcast possible. We're very thankful to Tad Abraham who has been putting this together each uh, week and continues to do that uh, with great care. And this morning, you noticed uh, that we had uh, Hannah Quattlebaum with us as she has uh, been our acolyte this morning. And later in this service, you will hear from Hannah in song. We hope that this morning finds you well as we continue along in this COVID-19 emergency. Uh, we are now at day 25 in the South Carolina Annual Conference in which we are not having uh, gatherings or meetings or services, waiting for the all clear, waiting with great, uh, great anticipation for that day. And it will come, my brothers and sisters. There has been some glimmers of hope this week that there is light at the end of the tunnel with this, uh, with this emergency. And it's going to come, and we're going to be back here at Zion in full voice on a beautiful Sunday. What a beautiful day that is going to be. As we do every Sunday here and on this Easter Sunday, I ask you the question, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray on this Easter morning for your holy church, wherever it may be across this earth. We pray that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as your daughters and sons. We pray for all who find themselves walking in darkness or doubting their faith, 
that they may encounter the risen Lord who brings light to their journey and the peace of God's love. We pray for healing of hearts and relationships, that the risen Lord will open the path to reconcile and heal families, communities, and co-workers. We pray for all who struggle for peace and justice, that you will provide a new springtime of faith that will yield an abundant harvest to their efforts. For all who are in need, we pray, for the poor, the sick, refugees, runaway children, that they may encounter the risen Lord who brings hope and healing for peace throughout the world, that the risen Lord will guide the human family away from violence, particularly in the Middle East and Africa, and toward new efforts of cooperation and human development. We pray for all the human family that you will deliver us from the coronavirus. Restore to health all who are ill. Guide all who are searching for treatments for the disease. We pray for all who work in health care, public safety, and other essential services that you will protect them and their families as they serve the greater good. And Father, we remember those who are unemployed, that you will guide them in maximizing their resources and open new opportunities for them to use their gifts and skills. We pray for all who are confined to their home and for those who cannot be with family that you will protect them, renew their spirits, and give them strength. We pray for all who are grieving, that you will give them peace and hope as they hear the good news of Christ's resurrection. We pray particularly, Father, for those who have died from the COVID-19. We pray that you may welcome them into the eternal light and the joy of God's presence. And we pray now as Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lesson this morning is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, the first through the 18th verse. Hear the word of God as St. John records it. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up at a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. But she had said this. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In preparation for this week, a phrase has been upon my mind. The treasure is on the ground right before us. Back in 2004, my wife and I, we took our last child living at home on that last vacation that you do with your children before they leave home for college or to go on their own in the work world. We took our son, Jared Robert, to Edisto Beach, the lovely beach area of uh, the state of South Carolina. I'm not particularly a fan of the beach, but Jared is. And that's where he wanted to go, was to the beach for this particular vacation. For you see, it would be a few weeks later that Jared would be leaving for the University of South Carolina, where he would study there from 2004 to 2008, getting his degree in business from the Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina. We were at Edisto for this vacation, and I remember an afternoon, Jared and I were sitting on the beach and uh, watching the, the surf come in. It was a beautiful day. And while we were sitting where we were located, there came upon us a man walking uh, with uh, one of those metal detectors. You may have seen one. You certainly have probably seen pictures of someone that he was going back and forth, ooh, 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 back and forth, and then came up and went around Jared and I. He was, he was an odd-looking fellow. I remember he wore a very big hat. And AC also, he had a floppy T-shirt that looked like it was something from Woodstock. And the shorts, those shorts looked like they hadn't been washed in a very long time. Remember, he had flip-flops that I think uh, could have been used sometime in, in the Roman era. They were that old. And he had this metal detector with him, but that wasn't all of it. He had digging tools and some sort of belt. 
And he had this burlap sack that wrapped around his neck and to his side. And he was working that metal detector up and down that beach, came up around us and then walked off. And I, I could see in Jared's eye that, yes, there was going to be a smart remark coming very, very soon. And it did. Jared uh, looked uh, at me and he said, dude, <laughs> that dude's just all wrong. Dad, he's looking down in the ground for buried treasure when the treasure is right before us. The beautiful ocean, the beautiful surf, the birds, and the dunes. Dad, that dude's looking in the ground for buried treasure. And the treasure is above the ground right before us. I remember that conversation with Jared and leading up uh, to this Easter Sunday. Mary Magdalene and uh, the disciples have gone uh, to the tomb of Jesus Christ. They are looking for buried treasure, but they find out that the treasure was not buried as they had supposed, but rather was alive and living forevermore. This morning, before the sun arose, Mary Magdalene awoke before the disciples. They were all heavy with sleep, and I'm pretty sure just in a state of absolute mental fatigue from the weekend. But Mary got up before them all, and she went to the tomb of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, she went there for three reasons. One was to finish the burial rite that had not been completed on Friday after Jesus had been crucified. It had been a rush to get him to a tomb. A good friend, Joseph of Arimathea, had let them borrow his garden tomb for that purpose so that Jesus would have a place to be at rest and to be at peace. But the burial rites had not been completed. The body had to be washed and cleaned properly. Also, it had to be wrapped and to be wrapped in a more thorough manner than had been on Friday. And then there was the placing of spice for this is a different day and time with dealing with the dead than our own. And then also there would be another reason. A reason is that this would be a chance for Mary to have some time alone with the Lord and Savior's body and to weep some more. You know, when you lose a loved one, sometimes in the fog of the moment of the day of the death, it is hard to cry because of all of the things that are happening. You're almost numb, having been through that with two sets of parents. But a day or so later, it begins to crystallize, and you need to cry. I believe that Mary went here not only to wash the body, but also to cry. And also, I believe she went there for a third reason, which is, is to be alone and to ponder the future, to think about what Jesus had done and what he had said and where she went personally from there. But as Mary Magdalene arrives at the tomb, she makes a startling discovery. Jesus was not there. Jesus had done as he had said that he would. He had said to them on occasion, 
I will rise on the third day. He had told them that this, he would be handed over to evil men and that he would die, but that he would rise on the third day and live again. And Mary has discovered, and the disciples whom she informs, and they go back to the empty tomb, they find out themselves that this is true, that Jesus was alive. And then we have that great encounter when Mary speaks to him. And she returns to the upper room and tells them of their conversation. Jesus was not buried treasure, but rather was living treasure. Jesus was not under the ground, but was on top of the ground. Death had no dominion over our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The tomb would not hold him. And he burst forth from that tomb and went to living again. And because of that, you and I have the assurance of the eternal life that it is real and it will be so with us. And this is a message uh, that I find filled with hope for all of us each and every day, and especially in these days. This particular narrative is, when you read it, it empowers your soul. I don't know if you're like me, but I feel my soul stirred and hope swells up inside. And this is a message that we need for this day and all days. For it is easy sometimes when we walk in the faith to fall into traps that the earth creates for us and become like the disciples and thinking of Jesus in terms of as a buried treasure. It took place a long time ago. It is buried in the annals of time. It was in a land far, far away in a time long, long ago. But the Gospel of John reminds us today that Jesus was not dead and buried treasure, but rather he was alive and a living treasure. With Jesus, there is no gravestone. With Jesus, there is no tomb. Jesus is above the ground, not under the ground. And we think of this compared to other faiths of the world. It makes Christianity powerful and empowering to the soul. Because in other religions, their leaders have tombs. Islam and its leader, Mohammed. Well, Mohammed has a tomb. And you can, if you want to make the trip, you can visit it in Medina, Saudi Arabia. Buddhism and its leader, Siddhartha Gautama, Gautama has a tomb. It is located in Kushinagar, Uttar Pradesh in India. It is a great place of pilgrimage. There are people there every day. It is there that they have a place where his his ashes were interned. Also, if if you look at at another of the world's face, Confucianism, Kongzhu or Confucianism, Fuchsius, as we call him in the English tongue, has a tomb. It is in the city of Kifu in the Shandong province in China, that is between Shanghai and Beijing. In Hinduism, if you ask about that great faith, there is no central figure to that religion, and therefore there are no tombs. 
But with Jesus, there is no tomb with bones in it. There are, there is no tomb with the dust of a body once. There is nothing. Jesus burst forth from the tomb and he lived. And the treasure is above the ground. And he is living today, living in heaven. He is at the right hand of the Father right now. And he is there advocating on our behalf right now. And he is there waiting for the day for God to give him the signal for him to return. And it will be a signal that when God says it is, not when man thinks it is. It will be when God says it is, and it will be, as Paul says, it comes like a thief in the night. Jesus is a living Lord. He is a living master in our lives. He is not buried treasure. He is a living treasure in our life. And we must remember, remember those words. He's on the top of the ground, not under the ground. A great lay person in my past in the ministry spoke to me once in a way that I will never forget and a great lesson learned. His name was Boyd Roberts. Boyd graduated uh, from Clemson University. We have many in this congregation that loved that university, attended that university and graduated. He finished there in the 50s and from that he got a job out in California, and he went to a town called Dixon, California, and he lived there for 35 years before returning home to South Carolina. Now, Dixon is east of San Francisco. It's going out uh, toward uh, the area near Davis, California, where the University of California, Davis. It is farm country, California. Very fertile. And uh, Boyd used to talk about being in California all those years. He says, you know, most people, pastor, when they talk about California, they don't have a lot of nice things to say about California. And he says, you know, I really don't understand because I lived there for 35 years and it was a wonderful experience. It is a state of tremendous scenery and also some of the best food in the world you'll ever eat because you have so many cultures that cross paths there. Some of the best food in the world is there. And then he used to say this, you know, Pastor, California started because someone found gold and they started mining the ground for it. But it was my experience that the real gold that was California was on the top of the ground. The gold was its people because I met some of the best people in my life there and made friends for the rest of my life. The gold was on top of the ground. I remember my son's words. I remember Boyd's words with that thought in mind this week is we're hearing that great narrative of the faith in Jesus being risen from the grave. Mary Magdalene and the others went to looking for buried treasure called Jesus Christ. But he was not there. Instead, they found that he was on the top of the ground and he was alive. And my brothers and sisters, we are blessed because of it. May we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit to be upon our reading of the scriptures and upon our thoughts about it together this morning. 
and that we will go forward into this day and the days ahead with all the uncertainty that is around us, that we will have the Easter hope that's in our hearts, that Jesus was buried on Friday, but on Sunday, he was alive and is alive forevermore. Father, help that to burn in our hearts. Amen. We thank you for joining us in our broadcast this morning. We will see you again uh, in a week's time at this hour. Next Sunday, we will be looking uh, at uh, the Apostle Thomas for the readings uh, on that Sunday always after Easter are about Thomas because we enter into now the times of the appearances of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the disciples after Easter. And next Sunday, it will be Thomas, my Lord, my God. Until then, may God be with you. Keep safe. Let us have the benediction. Go now in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just.